Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank Good God morning, for YouTube. Good morning, Michael James. Good morning, Katie Hogan. Holy cow, this is some loud microphone action. Um, here we go. Welcome to another edition of Live from the Heartland Show. We're here at the very lovely today, very cool and very sunny corner of Glenwood and Lunt. We are in the heart of Rogers Park. Also the bustling and cozy Rosling, right, little Rogers Park. And um, how'd you like that little role I did? I don't there? understand it. Okay, well. <laughs> what happened to the Sox last night? Uh, Sox uh, lost 4-2, to two, and uh, that was following the game before when they went into the ninth inning against Boston, winning one nothing and lost it 3-1. to one. Which, Hannah, are you cheering? What, are you root for Boston? I'm from the Marlins. Oh, she's a Marlin fan. That explains everything. <laughs> well, okay. okay. We've got a nice lineup today. We're going to have our friend Cook County Clerk David Orr coming up. And uh, among his other duties, he, um, he looks very closely at the issue of voter suppression. And we're going to talk about attempts to suppress the vote in many states. And we're going to address both the issue of voter IDs in general as well as how the ID laws are implemented and their consequences intended or otherwise. Well, and we're also lucky to have Michael Peshkin, who is... Uh, Professor at Northwestern, professor of engineering, and um, but in his uh, role as founder of Student Vote Project, uh, we thought it was a a good uh, twining of um, David and Michael because the issue is whether or not people can register as well as whether or not they can vote, and um, so let's let's just kick it right off. We also have. We also have Liz Mandeville. Liz Mandeville playing music this morning. And she's a Tremendous. Chicago woman who sings the blues, and she comes out of Wisconsin, but I'm sure she'd been all over Mississippi. We also have um, a friend, a friendly guest of mine, Dr. Mackin, Callie Mackin. If we uh, can have a sometime, and if we ever get hooked up downtown, um, she'll talk about uh, what it means to be. Um, Former students of this guy sitting right here, David Orr, our former professor, and uh, because every year, if we can, uh, those of us who graduated together from Mundelein College get together and talk about what uh, what is still important in our lives, which remains a lot of the things that we were working on, studying, activating about 40 years ago, as it turns out. So it's full circle time. Time flies. Indeed. David, welcome back. Thank you. Always good to be here. Thanks for getting up, brother. I'm an early riser, thank you. Um, for everyone who uh, watches this on YouTube, um, David Orr is, you, you are unique in the country. You are much lauded for the work you do running elections for all of Cook County outside of the city of Chicago proper. Um, as someone who actually did some training under you, I know that the folks who work in your office to train judges to prepare for election day are a quality bunch doing a really great job and I thank you for your service all these years. I'm not sure if people really uh, can understand what what you've uh, managed to pull off there um, but it's really quite astounding. I wish the city of Chicago had such a uh, overseer on our elections as you. Well thanks Katie. Are we getting any closer to the city having that kind of service and attention? I think we're getting closer. I, I do believe the, when you raise issues, even though uh, my responsibilities in the county, uh, it has a great spill-off effect. Uh, over the years, they've uh, adopted many of the things that we've done. In fact, they have taken people from my office to work in theirs. Uh, so I do think there's been a lot of improvements in the City Board of Elections. The controversial thing going on right now, and then we'll get to the main subject, is that every think tank in the last 20 years has suggested that we should combine the two jurisdictions. The County Clerk's uh, Election Department does the suburbs and the City Board of Elections. Mayor Daly's panel a few years ago pushed it really hard. A new panel for Rahm Emanuel has pushed it. Uh, the bottom line is politics is still preventing that. So all the uh, experts say it should be done. There could be many, many millions of savings, uh, 10 million a year at a time when we're cutting mental health clinics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but let's put it like this. There has been lots of talk, not much action, 
I think politics will prevent that from happening in the near future, which is very sad. Politics meaning some people have a vested interest in keeping the system as it is? Um, the people with the power are not willing to go far enough to do it. And even though at this time when, you know, budget is everything, what you just said, that it would save money, that it would uh, put money back in the city's coffers, does not overcome whatever is seen as the political gain for these individuals? Absolutely, yeah. But the good Because news, it means jobs, or? Well, sure. I mean, uh, still pretty much everything in, in government in Cook County, even though patronage has weakened and we have more laws and more people have gone to jail, remember the vast majority of those people are still there from the way in which they got hired. And uh, many of the major politicians in this county, city, and state keep track of every one of those people. And they know exactly where the jobs are. and They, they have that much time on their hands? This is important to them. It's very important to them. But what, one good thing that's come of this is now the powers that be in the city and the county have had to look carefully at the two election budgets, mine and the city's. Uh, now, the bad news is they've discovered an enormous difference in how much we each get. Right. Now, the county has more elections, much more complicated elections, more registered voters, usually. The city has... It's it's close though, right? It's very close. But the city has, like some years with no elections, like next year, much easier elections. There's just 50 wards. Right. In the county, there's hundreds and hundreds. There's over a thousand taxing bodies. There's hundreds of towns. But the bottom line is one jurisdiction gets somewhere above $10 million more a year than the other. And you can guess which. Uh, so that is being looked at. Uh, I would say the... Uh, there's been a lot of pronouncements on the joint city-county collaboration. We're making strides. We're nowhere near where we should be. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you impressed Michael quite a bit with your presentation Monday night at the uh, 49th Ward political meeting about, I'm, I'm assuming it was all about voter protection and... Um, Just answering a question. But, um, yeah, yeah, he answered a question, but it, it, it tweaked my uh, desire to know more about the voter suppression movement that's going on in the country. I mean, we've heard first about Florida, we've heard about Texas, uh, we're concerned uh, about both of those states, but also Pennsylvania, uh, and there are a number of other states. And uh, so I think the question that comes up for some people is uh, why not uh, voter ID laws? Uh, some people say people have already registered to vote, why would they have to carry around an ID? And, uh, and then there's the question of uh, even if there was a voter ID uh, law in effect in a state, uh, how that's used to manipulate uh, the vote and basically suppress the vote. So if, give us a little bit of your uh, insight into this overall issue that's very crucial at this time. If you don't mind, make sure I come back to the specific question. But let me just give a quick context. I mean, it's, it's, it's important. It, it's corny, but we know this stuff. For thousands of years, the way people s settle decisions like this was through violence. So the tribe that would win, the country that would win, we, we kill the other folks, we take over and we rule. That's power. Now, in an alleged democracy, and ours is, is barely worthy of the name anymore, it's a greatly weakened democracy, but in a situation like ours, that power is every bit as important. The power to declare war, the power to tax, is every bit as important as when Genghis Khan was conquering everybody. So, it's so naive of many of us to assume the way to accumulate that power. The naive don't realize that government has enormous power, and so they give up a lot of it by not participating. The insiders know elections will determine enormous power and make the millionaires billionaires, etc. So, we got to remember that. And they know that elections are often decided by that small number of people who are kind of in the middle of the road and maybe switch from Democrat to Republic. So, uh, that, that there's always been this, and I, I'm going to beat up the Republicans today for the voter suppression efforts they've done, but those of us in Chicago, and, and we, we three and others in the audience know, the Democrats were great at voter suppression. Uh, there it wasn't so much repressing Republicans, it was repressing those Democrats that weren't on their side. And they did that in some of the ways that the Republicans do today, in other ways flat out violence. I mean, the way they beat up our people years ago and, and found ways to deregister them. Uh, but now it's most Republicans. So the, the key to what Michael said is that they are very clever. The Bush White House, after the 2000 election was stolen, and, no, and I, I say these, I'm, I'm not trying to be outrageous, we blamed it all on the Chads in Florida. 
That wasn't it. It was the Supreme Court stepped in in an extraordinarily unusual case uh, and basically gave the election to, to Bush. The Bush White House began immediately, because they know they didn't win the election, they know they didn't have enough votes. Uh, they began working, and all through the, the last 12 years, there's been enormous activities that one of the biggest things they got away with, if you remember, is the Bush White House fired about eight or nine um, uh, um, U.S. attorneys. Right. In Republican states, because they would not prosecute voter fraud to the extent that the White House did. Yeah, in and Arizona, I remember there Arizona, was Arizona, a lot, lot of places. Republican. Now they got away with it. Uh, when the Democrats took control, they were, as usual, mamby pammies and did nothing. Uh, <laughs> but I, I say that because these people are mamby pammies. I know some of them, and they're very clever. What clever means is, if you just ask about voto IDs, most Americans would probably say, well, of course, why not? Okay, so get to the heart of it is two things. We have to decide if the photo IDs, the way it's being implemented in some of these states, is really to fight fraud, as they say, or really to decline certain major democratic populations like blacks and Latinos and young. So let's look at some facts. Uh, first of all, uh, every group that's looked at this says there's almost absolutely no truth to the widespread fraud they're talking about particular when it comes to voter impersonation. That's what the voter ID is supposed to say. Now in most places, you have to prove who you are when you register. And in most places, you go to the Secretary of State's office, you're there in person, you got your ID. So that's the way we register. In most cases, though, we don't require it at the polling place uh, for the following reasons. Uh, so that's the history, but they understand um, people well, why shouldn't they have? So first of all, there's absolutely no evidence that fraud is the way it should be. Okay, and every study shows that. I think it was, might have been the Brennan sister, but somebody, Brennan Center, came out recently and said you're six times more likely to be struck by lightning than get convicted of voter impersonation. Okay, now not that we should be concerned about fraud. Again, what I started with, that we know what people can do. We should be concerned. But the voter ID is to stop voter impersonation. Just one good example because of time. So we take Texas. Texas passes the law. Okay. Now in Texas's report and brief, they could find not one single case in these 10 years they reviewed of voter impersonation. But they did admit in their brief that roughly 700,000 Latinos did not have the requisite voter ID that the law just passed. So uh, there are decent people that think this is okay. I'm talking about the motives, and there's probably decent people that don't understand these motives. Let's go a little further to prove the point. So in Texas, the reformer types, you know, su suggest several amendments. Because down the road, voter ID, if we had it, photo ID at the polling place, a few years from now, when everybody could get a free one, when it was guaranteed access, we, we dealt with all the problems, like in Pennsylvania, 11% of the entire population doesn't have one. Okay, that's a lot of votes. Okay, 11% of those registered to vote don't have it. So back to Texas. So what the reformers said, okay, so we, we can't win this, let's amend it. So let's say, first of all, that if you're really poor and you can't afford this, and this is like a poll tax, that the state will pay for it. They voted that down. And they voted down several amendments, including one that there's 81 counties in the state of Texas that do not have a Secretary of State's office. And somebody said, well, wait a second, if you're going to make people go to get that and able to vote, let's at least put a Secretary of State's office where they can do it. The answer to that was no. So if you look carefully at all these things, it's an absolute uh, refusal to do anything which, which legitimize a photo ID. Let's take something uh, dear to uh, Michael's uh, uh, the great work that he does up in Northwestern, who's coming up in a moment. So That would be Michael Peshkin. Michael Peshkin, Professor Peshkin from Northwestern. So um, everybody says we need to get young people involved, right? Students, it's great for them, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so in Texas, uh, part of their photo ID is that if you're a student in Texas with a government-issued student ID, that's not good enough. So the state of Texas gives you an ID. You can't use that for voting. Jeez. So just to make it simple, um, most of these are very clearly planned to hit at certain populations. Uh, the ideal is swing states. Now, unfortunately, some Democrats have uh, been on the bandwagon because they don't think it through. Uh, they don't understand some of these things. Uh, all of the um, ob objective groups would agree with this. Uh, even worse, other parts of voter suppression, as you might know, in Florida, which is probably the worst of all in many ways, Florida 
went ahead and passed an extremely dangerous voter registration law. Because remember, after the Bush White House and others destroyed ACORN, which is a very legitimate group that was registering poor people throughout the country, right. they go after voter registration. And they made it so um, difficult that the League of Women Voters actually had to say, we quit in Texas. Because what they were saying is, you register these people, you've got to bring the cards in within 48 hours. Now, that's like saying to someone, a League of Women Voters person who lives in Elgin, and every time they register somebody, they got to bring it all the way downtown. Now, does that make any sense? But that was the law. And furthermore, you'd be seriously fined, so they could have been wiped out. Now, for the little bit of good news, I'm sorry if I'm going too long, but the good news is the Obama White House finally got moving. The Justice Department uh, knocked out Texas and South Carolina, although it's still in court. Wisconsin struck down, uh, the court struck down Wisconsin. Florida's had several wins and losses in their battle. And in this case, the registration one was knocked out. So, uh, so voter, wait. Which means the legal voters can go back and register people. In Florida. Right. And did you say they struck down the Texas? Well, here, here in, in the South, we, because of the civil rights laws, thank God for them, uh, we have to have something called preclearance. Right. Because the history of discriminating in their voting says that when, when the southern states, most of them, pass laws affecting voting, it has to be cleared by the Justice Department. And the Republicans have been enormously fighting hard to take that away in the last 20 years. Fortunately, they haven't been successful. So. Uh, the Justice Department, under Eric Holder, struck down South Carolina and Texas as a couple of them. Now, but they have a right to go to court. So that, that is in court as we speak. Uh, so they're smart, though. That they're going after, uh, particularly the photo ID, because if uh, there's a study out, I think it's, I mean, his name is Slater, but there's a lot of things one could look up um, on the web where it proves that these measures will help the Republicans. Um, like I say, Pennsylvania 11 percent, but when you look at the 11 percent of, of people that don't have them, the vast majority of those people are black, brown, and very elderly. Uh, and so you, you do that in every state, and you find that. So besides the photo ID, besides trying to stop students, um, and besides trying to make registration more difficult, um, they've also tried to kill same-day registration. But a good thing happened, I believe, in Maine. Um, they actually passed it. The voters were so angry, they demanded a referendum, and they put it back. Remember, same-day registration is something I support. It means that even if you didn't register, that you can still go vote on Election Day. And register at the, register same, at the same moment. Same time. Let me ask you a question about Texas, where you uh, pointed out that uh, a great number of people who are uh, basically disenfranchised through voter suppression uh, can't even find a place to register in their county. I would assume most of these people don't have driver's licenses, so they don't, how would they get to, you know, it's just an added burden to get to the next county. Right, so, so the key to this, like I say, is uh, we can talk about what we do about it, but the key is if there's a certain kind of a very restrict photo ID. Now, if you say you can have photo ID, but you can use all these other things, that's a little more lenient. There's supposed to be a law if you, and the law is supposed to say this by courts. If, in fact, you do require that, the states are supposed to pay for it but they found ways not to do it. Uh, so um, what you need is a photo ID that, that you get from the driver's facility or a state ID like we have in Illinois, that you're not a driver but you get a state ID. Right. Well, yes, in many cases you need other identification, you need a birth record. So again, the reformers in Texas said, why don't we give the poor a free birth, birth record so they could go in the Secretary of State's office and get a photo ID and right. they turned that down too. So you, you did talk about pushback from like Holder uh, and others. How much, how extensive is the pushback? Do you think it will be effective? Do you think this, uh, this uh, wave of voter suppression in uh, swing states and Republican controlled states uh, is uh, continuing, will have a big impact? Or do you think we'll be able to nip it in the bud enough to this election so it's not uh, a, a draconian situation? Well, first, first the good news, and then I think the challenge to it is, like we say, at this point, Wisconsin's was struck down. Texas and South Carolina are in the pits at the moment. Uh, there's been some success in Michigan. Pennsylvania is, is up to challenge. Uh, some of the red states, uh, I don't think they're challenged as much, but it won't matter. They're going to win that state anyway. So things are up in the air, which is good. But what people need to do 
uh, and particularly in the swing states, is to find ways first to identify those. A lot of people don't realize it. Uh, again, there's, I, I figure that there are more seniors in Pennsylvania without the proper ID than the city of Pittsburgh. Wow. I'll say it again. There are more seniors in the state of Pennsylvania without the proper ID than the city of Pittsburgh. We've got to get Carl okay. Davidson on that. So the, the key is those people need to be identified. They need to understand it. Some of them will go on their own to get the proper ID if, if in fact, we don't win these court bills. Other times there may be people that have to help provide financial assistance or rides to people so they get the correct ID. Um, it has the potential to be devastating. On the other hand, uh, we're aware of it now. Legally, we're winning a number of these cases. Um, so I, I do believe uh, we can minimize the impact in the short run. Uh, what should activists be doing right now about this? Well, they should be supporting all these efforts legally and politically, making a lot of noise, and making it hard for those people that pass the legislation or even support it. Uh, they may not have been successful here in Illinois, but many people support it, and they should be taken to task. But above all, where there's organizing going on, to again identify those people. Uh, by the way, you know, you voted in the past, but you don't have the ID. It's a new requirement, and try and help those people to re-register in time. Um, I know that we're running out of time, and um, there's way too much I would like to ask you. Um, well, how about we'll have David come back and talk more about voter suppression? <laughs> yeah, I think we should uh, regularly. I mean, in I between think now... I think it's a continuing issue. <laughs> it is a continuing issue. I was surprised when I got your uh, democracy news this week that you were focused on TIF money. And I um, didn't realize that that was in your bailiwick. And... Um, the nice thing about this job, most people don't know, I mean, why did I want Everything's to be, in your bailiwick. Why did I want to be county clerk, you know, 20 years ago? Well, elections was number one. But there's a lot of other things that we deal with, which means I can stick my mouth out there on other things, which I'm trying to do more and more. But uh, since, we, since, welcome we, that, since we set the tax rates in the 1,500 taxing bodies in Cook County, we have a fiduciary responsibility to put out 